Hello and happy Sunday. This is Kelly with ifyouhaveanegg.com and today is Sunday, September the 10th and tomorrow is the big day. It's the day that I've been waiting on. So we are going to continue talking about soft food here in just a little bit after some of you all hop in. Um, do not forget we are at 39% of our star goal. Feel free to send me some stars and we would love to be able to pay for some of these things um, that I gather here to be able to do these chats for you all. But hello everyone, happy Sunday. And um, the weather here in Tennessee has broken today. So it is, and by broken, I mean a good thing. Um, it is fantastic outside today and hello Deanna. It is good to see you, haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. So it is so very good to see you. Um, but yeah, it's fantastic weather here today in East Tennessee. I hope you all are enjoying your weather as well. Um, we have um, two seasons here in Tennessee and it's either hot or hotter. Oh, and yeah, and then you with a little sprinkling of winter, but yeah, not much of, you know, much, not much with that. But hello, Carol Lou, it's good to see you. Um, welcome, welcome, everybody, again, September the 10th. I'm Kelly with ifyouhaveanegg.com. If you're brand new, please let us know because we would love to welcome you. Also, if you're brand new, um, all of this will be posted later on our blog. That is www.ifyouhaveanegg.com. I forget to tell people that sometimes. And hello, Hattie. Hello, Katie. Hello, Sarah from Rowley, Massachusetts. And hello, Joycelyn. It's good to see you. Um, so yeah, if you're brand new, you can also pick this up over there. If you're brand new, this is chat number three. Even if you're not brand new, this is still chat number 332. That means, new people, you have 331 other chats that you need to go back and watch all in completion. Yeah, just like go ahead and do a binge watching to get all of those in. And hello, Lynn. Um, I saw you Thursday. It's good to see you again. And hello, Mary from Pittsburgh. Uh, you need to go ahead and go watch all those. And hello, John from Home Base, who's being a smarty pants today. And we'll just talk about that later. Um, but anyway, new people, if you have an egg.com, it's the best place to find everything that we're going to talk about tonight and to be able to go back and print these out later. Or you can go to YouTube. That's just YouTube.com. Search if you have an egg. And you can go back and watch these other 331 chats. Um, hello, Mary Ann from Pennsylvania. Um, or, you know, watch them, print them out. We also have lots of... Um, recipes and things for you to watch as well and hello sherry and hello pat from illinois and hello trish from california also if you're brand new let us know because we would love to welcome you hello kim it is so good to see you and hello elaine so today is september the 10th and hello sandra from naperville always so very good to see you and i hope you are feeling better she wasn't feeling too good last week and hello sherry from cape coral florida and hello jonna it's good to see you yeah well, a bunch of y'all popping on here so this is good news because this is the week after labor day so it's very good that you all are um they're hopping in and yes trish thank you we're going to talk about that here in just a second um but today is september the 10th it is a sunday in case you hadn't figured that out if you are here with us live we're going to be doing a couple of live interaction things if you are joining with us later or if you're watching this on replay later you can still comment and i'll see it yeah and good sandra is covid free so we are happy 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 for that news um again september the 10th a little bit of news um for today for september um the offending tooth this one right here that one right there comes out tomorrow so you all will not have to listen to me squall or whine about this tooth anymore after tomorrow hopefully fingers crossed so wish me luck say a little prayer and um, just don't try to call me if you happen to have my phone number because i have no idea if i'll be able to speak or not who knows i've not been prepared for that part of it number two i want to let you all know do not underestimate the effects of illness and medication on your on your weight we talk a lot of times about, you know, um, well, I don't know what happened. I had a gain at the scale or I don't know what happened or I'm having trouble, you know, I'm struggling, whatever. I don't want you to underestimate um, the effects of medication and, you know, and being ill on your, you know, on your actual weight. So when the infection in my tooth was raging and I had started the mega antibiotics that they were giving me, hello Marlene, and had started the mega antibiotics that they were giving me, I had literally in two days a three pound swing upward swing in my weight um, and I can tell you from personal experience because I was I was here I was with me I couldn't I could barely eat anything besides applesauce or macaroni and cheese so I promise you I guarantee I did not actually have a a gain of three pounds okay then when the antibiotic was done when I was finished with the antibiotic and the infection was completely gone Hello, Orlando Debbie. And the, and the infection was completely under control. Guess what? Complete swing lock. Two days later, a complete swing back in the opposite direction. Three pounds up, three pounds down, just from the silly infection and from those mega antibiotics. So I can't explain, I cannot explain why that happens. I'm not a doctor. 
I'm not a nutritionist. I don't, I don't know why these things happen, but just know that it does personal experience in this last couple of weeks. So um, it does happen and I don't want you to get frustrated if you are under the care of a physician or on some kind of strong medication, it can happen. Three pounds up and three pounds right back down just over the course of a couple of days. Okay, also Karen um, who faithfully posts all, every single day, like I don't know, I've not counted recently to see how many days it's been in a row since she's missed one, but Karen H posts religiously over in um, the if you have an egg closed group and if you're not in that group yet you can I'm sure Debbie or Carol Lou would be happy to post that link for you just don't forget to answer the three questions even if it's just I was on the chat I was on the chat I was on the chat just so I know you're a real person and I can let you in but she posted um, an eye-opening countdown um, over in the group today and I'll just read it to you here it'll be posted um, in these notes when Casey gets this posted but you can go see it right now not like right now, like don't leave the chat, but you know, you can go see it over on the If You Have an Egg group. Fall begins in 13 days. Halloween is in 51 days, and Alyssa is super pumped about Halloween. And hello, Deb, Orlando, Debbie. The time change, thank you, Carol Lou. Thank you, Carol Lou and Debbie. The time change happens in 56 days, so right on the heels of Halloween. Thanksgiving is in 74 days. That's like coming up super fast. And Christmas is in 106 days. Not prepared. Not prepared for any of this. But anyway, so that was just a, that was just a, um, just a cute, you know, kind of a what's coming up soon on, um, you know, the, from Karen over on the If You Have an Egg group. Speaking of Alyssa, because she has to be exactly like her Nona, she went to my dentist on Thursday and had something wrong with one of her teeth, but it was one of these little teeth up here. So she has now officially lost her first tooth. Anyway, she's too stinking cute, but she does not need to copy everything that I do. And let's see, Sarah says, can't wait for the holidays and to fall back and to fall back in November. And Deanna says, I finished making my Christmas cards yesterday. Are you serious? You're already making Christmas cards and hello, Vicki. And okay, so I need to know who last week, even though it was Labor Day week, who attended an in-person workshop? Give me some thumbs ups for that. So thumbs ups for going to in-person workshops or for going to Zoom workshops, thumbs up for those. And hearts for being with us live. And hello, Melvie, it's good to see you. Hearts for being live with us last week or for watching later on replay. Yep, Lynn was both. I'm seeing lots of hearts already. Mary Mary was must have sat her bottom in a chair or um, I did a Zoom. Sarah was faithful to Larry Garrett on Zoom. Oh, she did that this morning. Yep, Mary's all hearts. So Bravo stickers. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, wait. So Trish has an important question. Are you having a root canal or are they pulling it? And hold on. She said, her dentist always has her take the antibiotic. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's long, Trish. I may not get that whole thing. The morning before she goes and have one. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, because it can, yeah, because the infection can definitely go to your heart. Yeah, been on an antibiotic. Got rid of that. Oops, and I'm having it pulled, having that puppy pulled tomorrow. But bravo to everyone who went to an in-person workshop, did a Zoom workshop, or attended with us live, or watched later on demand last week. Bravo, stickers, everyone. Okay, and because it was an emotional roller coaster of pain, no pain, medicine, weight gain, weight loss, you know, whatever. Um, it was a great week last week to be talking about stopping emotional eating in five. Um, so last week. We talked about long days at work. We talked about being in pain and getting ready for minor surgery, and it's just a tooth pulling. Um, we talked about going to celebrations with family. We talked about lots of different emotional reasons to eat. Emotional eating doesn't mean that it's sad. And hello, Sandra from Demon's Ferry. It doesn't mean it's sad, and it doesn't mean that it's bad. It could be a happy thing. Um, but I knew that everyone in the chat last week when I said, you know, it's been a long day at work. No one was, has shown up that was supposed to. You feel so fill in the blank. Or it was a celebration. Happy, happy times. You're seeing people you haven't seen in a while. You feel so blank. Or that this week you were up and down all night, couldn't get any rest, whatever, and you feel so blank. So none of those answers were hungry, okay? So we did talk about last week that habits die hard, whether it's happy or whether it's sad. A lot of emotions are tied around food, and those are habits that we developed when we were very young. Um, they actually, um, your brain forms neural pathways that say, when I'm happy, I'm rewarded with food, and it's an immediate response. And so your that neural pathway goes, oh, 
That's the path of least resistance, the path of least resistance. When I'm sad, food. If I'm angry, food. There's lots of different, you know, not necessarily bad emotions that trigger food responses because we've spent a lifetime, whether you're 23 or 103, don't think we have anybody that old here, but you know what I'm saying, 23 or 83, because we could have some 83 year olds here, um, you know, we've spent a lifetime developing these habits and these, these neural pathways that say, oh, when this happens, if I get this, eat, that's gonna take care of that feeling, whether it's happy, sad, you know, whatever. That's a real thing. Um, we talked about reorganizing and redirecting. Um, so, you know, if the answer to the question isn't, you know, if you're saying, I feel so, and my fearless leader, Gwen, um, gets into that, she has a habit that she has formed, a new neural pathway that she's created, if she's walking towards the kitchen and she knows trouble is getting ready to happen, and I love it, love it, love it when she says that. If you all ever get a chance to come visit us um, in Powell for the Tuesday night meeting, she's hilarious to watch. We'll have to see if we can get her on here some night, but she said, you know, and she's so country, you know when you're headed to the kitchen and tr you're just getting ready to be trouble. That Then she says out loud, loud to herself, I'm feeling so, and if the word is not hungry, she does she does this take taking five and tries to redirect regroup reorganize you know and go in a different direction and then we talked about stopping for five five minutes aloha kathy if that five minutes was um if you were going to set a timer or if you were going to just walk around for five minutes or call a friend or do something watch you know set one of those youtube videos that i talked about last week where it has the countdown you know just for five minutes but something if you can do that every time you do that you are retraining your brain to think oh okay I think I want food or you know like I'm I'm just gonna use um, you know stressed out because I'm a little bit stressed out about having this done to my tooth I'm actually not that stressed out about having it pulled I'm a little more stressed out about the gauze later so and I'm not gonna go into do too much detail because I don't want to because Deanna's a little squeamish and some of y'all might be too and I, I know she's here um but let's say stressed out if, the, if it is I'm feeling so stressed out about my tooth surgery if the answer is not hungry then figuring out one of these ways to take five minutes and just you know rethink this so your homework last week was stop for five you're welcome Deanna <laughs> see I remember things and hello Myrna it's very good to see you um uh, so your homework this week was stop for five hashtag stop for five and we were going to look it away think about okay what am I going to do for five minutes what can I do for five minutes or how will I know that it's been five minutes just to get me you know kind of in a different direction and to, to change those neural pathways so Vicki says that when she's looking for food but it's not a meal time so that's the first like recognition there she's looking for food kind of thinking about it there's getting ready, ready to be trouble in the kitchen trouble in the refrigerator um but she knows, but she thinks, wait, this is not a planned meal time. She drinks water and then she takes that five minutes, takes that five minutes of time to evaluate, am I really hungry or was I bored or just looking for something? You know, and it, if it's not hungry, she's not going to go get that food. When Lynn feels the refrigerator calling to her and, you know, y'all know this, y'all know this feeling. You're just walking by in a different room and you hear it go, Kelly. Um, I have such and such inside of me. But when Lynn feels that refri refrigerator calling, she's going to go do dishes. Or she's going to put away some laundry for five minutes and then decide, is she really hungry? Lynn is killing two birds with one stone with that one. Um, although I would never kill a bird, okay? Especially not with a stone, just saying. But yeah, but Lynn's getting two things taken care of then. So she's waiting her five minutes and she's getting some laundry folded. Mary Ann, though, says that when she feels like eating and she isn't hungry, she's going to set her phone and she's either going to go, she's going to go for a walk or she's going to start an activity that she's been putting off, something that she knows she should be doing, but she's kind of been, oh, I'll get to that, I'll get to that, I'll get to that. Then when the timer goes off, she is confident that she will have forgotten all about the food and she's just going to go ahead and finish the walk or finish whatever the task was at hand. So bravo, everyone. You did a great job on your homework this week. We even had some people participate on YouTube um, and I had one on Connect. So yay, yay, yay. Thank you very much. Thank you all for that. But again, bravo stickers. This week, we're talking about um, the joy in movement. And for those of you who just zoned out because you think that we're going to be talking about exercise again, we're not. So you can jump right back into the conversation, okay? Um, wait, let's see. Sarah said something. Wait, they're talking about, oh, I don't know. They're talking about having joints replaced or something. Okay, so 
Movement does not necessarily mean exercise, okay? So you all that are like, Ugh, we're talking about the exercise topic again. We're not. Okay, so jump right back in. I want you to raise your hand if you've ever had, ever in your whole life, if you've ever had a meh day or a blech day or a bah humbug day. So raise your hand if you've ever had one of those days. And I'll give y'all just a second, because y'all need to get that moving a little bit anyway. So get up and get up and raise your hand and get your, or raise the hand that has your uh, Fitbit or your Apple Watch on it so that it'll think that you're walking. Just kidding. Deanna has, Sherry has. And y'all know what I mean. You're just like, meh, or blech, or bah humbug. And it doesn't have to be Christmas time to be, to be bah humbug. Lynn has, Katie has, Mary. Yeah, I think we all have Sherry. Okay, so we all have. These are three fast, and Sarah has. These are three fast facts from Weight Watchers. Okay, they're not really. They're I sort of. They're sort of the fast facts from Weight Watchers for this week. Um, I took some creative license because they don't pay me. So I can I can change this up however I want to, okay? Oh, Elaine, Mary, Debbie, yep, all y'all, blah, 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 have had black days. Black days, blah, meh, whatever. Um, but I can, I can rearrange these fast facts because they don't pay me for this. So yeah, so I can do whatever I want to. Okay. Fast fact number one, sometimes you just need a nap. Okay. Really not kidding. WW is not, is not using this topic to undervalue the very real need for self care, um, for therapy maybe. And yes, sometimes a nap. So this topic is not meant to, to undervalue that or to devalue that the next two fast facts are just a way to bust that bad mood, but not always the only way, okay? So if you need something else, if you need something besides just the movement that we're getting ready to talk about, please don't say, well, no, I'm having a really off day, but all I can do is get up and walk around because that's what because that's what Kelly said. That is not what this means, okay? Second fast fact, sort of, loosely, it's a loose fast, fast fact, is that movement doesn't necessarily equal sweat. Okay, when I heard that this week's topic was about movement, I immediately started thinking exercise. Hmm. Again, I mean, I exercise. I am an exerciser. I do exercise. Um, Gwen actually told us about a, uh, a, a oh, what was it? A um, like they had some people come in for an interview just to get some, you know, some feedback. Not Weight Watchers. This was a totally different, you know, uh, survey or you know, like a. Um, Oh my gosh, what do they call those? Where they have people come into a room and ask them questions. And one of the, the first question they asked was, are you an exerciser or not? And the people who answered that they, and then the second thing they asked was, um, when you exercise, what do you think the benefits of exercise are? Um, and the people who answered that they were not exercisers all listed things like that were long-term health benefits, things like blood lower blood pressure, less medication, um, helps with your knees and your back and your, you know, whatever makes you more fit. They were all long term, but the people that all the people that said that they were exercises, hello, uh, hello, Loretta, the people that answered that question and said that they are exercisers, they all said things that were like in the now, like it lifts my spirits, it makes me happy, it makes me feel good, I enjoy it, I have a good time. You know, they were all, so the people who identified themselves as exercisers, they all answered with kind of in the moment, what happens for me right now while I'm exercising answers. And the people who said they were not exercisers, exercisers, all answered with long-term benefits. But again, movement doesn't necessarily mean that you're sweating, okay? It doesn't equal sweat. So Merriam-Webster um, defines movement as, so the, the definition of movement according to Merriam-Webster is, number one, if you use it as a noun, number one, the act or process of moving, especially change of place or position or posture, okay? So that doesn't mean jogging. It just could mean standing up or changing positions or changing into a different, you know, just a different some, just a different state. Um, and number two, a particular instance or manner of moving. So again, the definition of movement, according to Merriam-Webster, does not mean does not mean exercise. It doesn't mean that you're exercising. It just means you moved or changed positions. Okay, which leads me to fast fact number three, and that is that moving can bust a bad mood. That is an actual fact. So that's a fact, fact, that's a Kelly fact, and that's a Weight Watchers fact. So just moving the act or process of moving, especially a change of place 
or position or posture can bust a bad mood. So again, and I won't make you raise your, all, your hands this time, but if you do, raise the one with the exercise uh, band on it. But how many of you, how many of you think, you know, wow, I'm just in such a foul mood today. I need to change position to the beach or to the mountains or to Italy or you know, if you think, God, I could just, I could really get out of this bad mood if I just went somewhere besides here. How many of you all have ever thought that? And I know I said I wasn't going to make you. So if you had to pick somewhere, if it was somewhere besides here, wherever here is, if you could just change your position, because remember Merriam-Webster says it's the act or process of moving, especially change of place or position or posture. So if you, if you, if it was anywhere but here, if you could go anywhere but here to bust yourself out of a bad mood, where would you go? Would it be the beach? Would it be Disney World? That's what John would say. John would say to get out of a bad mood, he just needs to change his position to Disney World, even if it was just for a day. Ooh, Deanna says a winery. Good answer. That's a great answer, Deanna. Yep, lots of hand raising. Let's see what just a couple more people say. I don't want to run into the second half because we've got a lot to talk about in the second half. Let's see. Marion, honey, bless your heart. You're, I don't know why, but yours always come up abbreviated. Ooh, Sandra would move. Her, she would change her position to go visit her family. Sherry says the beach. Mary says just a walk. A walk would be good. Okay, two more, and then I'll go back to my list. Two more changes of position. Ooh, and Loretta says beach. Love the water. Best place to meditate. Carol Lou says beach for sure. My happy place. And Kim says just taking a drive. Just getting out of here, busting out of here, and taking a drive. Okay, so moving can bust a bad mood. So if you've ever been in such a meh mood that it seemed nothing would cut through that fog, um, you're just meh, you know, everything just, I don't know, it's just meh, just bleh. You just don't know why you're in that mood. And then you've ever had a cute puppy come up, like if you have a puppy and it comes up and says, Mom, 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 let's take a quick, quick outside, 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 outside. I need to go bark at some things. I need to go bark at some bugs. Look, there might be a bug over here. Look, there might be something out there. There's a squirrel. There's a something. Mom, 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 take me outside. And they're just so cute. And you take them outside and they're barking at bugs and rolling in leaves. And you think, oh my gosh, they are so cute. I'm so glad I got this puppy. They are hilarious. Look at them. Oh my goodness. Why are they, bar why are they barking at that roly-poly or why are they barking at those leaves? There's nothing to do. You can't be in a meh mood if you take your cute puppy outside right okay am i right you can't stay you can't stay bleh watching that or maybe it's a particularly black day you know and you're just thinking Ugh, five o'clock cannot come fast enough oh these people are driving me crazy why does that phone keep ringing it's just bleh, just a black day my lunch was terrible um, or I didn't get to have it or whatever. Well, nothing is going to make this day just not ever going to end. And then your coworker comes in and says, hey, did you see that facilities management just put out some new bird feeders? Do you want to, let's go check them out because I heard that the hummingbirds were out, you know, the ones that we, that we saw five years ago and we can't see them anymore. Let's go, let's go, let's go check them out. If you have a situation like that, and it doesn't have to be exactly that, but, you know, just going out, looking at it taking that little quick trip out with your coworker, just checking out those new bird feeders or maybe they planted some new flowers and vicky just in the right time said sitting outside looking at god's beauty exactly exactly yeah and debbie just on time says a blah day and i hold primera and she lays her head on her shoulder and gives her a hug perfect you can't be in a black mood when that's happening you know but it's a feel-good moment though so can you feel those dark clouds rising or lifting and then the last one um, is or if you've just had a bah humbug week infected to can't find anybody that wants to work people aren't showing up they're not where they're supposed to be on and on and on and on and on you're just having a bah humbug everybody feels sorry for me you know week but then your grandkids ask to spend the day with you in the woods taking a little hike carrying the little tykes when they're too tired for their, you know, little legs to walk. Take my picture over here. Take my picture over here. Do you want to get a selfie with me, Nona? Oh, wasn't supposed to be about me. Splashing in a creek, um, putting empty, um, 
uh, empty uh, Cheerios, plastic containers, letting them go down the, you know, letting them go down the creek and not answering your cell phone all day long, bad mood busted, okay? You cannot be in a bad mood when things like that are going on. And Sarah says, loves her two, oh, her two huge Maine Coons. That is some, that is some cat therapy right there. How big are they? How much do they weigh? Those things can get big. So those are just some, just a few ideas about movement. They were all simple. None of them broke a sweat. None of them, you know, well, okay. Carrying bow, carrying bow. Oh gosh. Your cats weigh 22 pounds each. That's crazy. But Carrie and Bo, yeah, we broke a sweat doing that. But talk about busting a bad mood. So whatever whatever little bit of movement it is that you can think of, and again, I'm not talking about exercise. I'm just talking about changing your position. Again, according to Merriam-Webster, the act or process of moving, especially changing a place or position or a posture or a particular instance of or manner of moving. So whatever you're gonna do, your homework for this week is hashtag bad mood busted, B-A-D-M-O-O-D-B-U-S-T-E-D. -O -O -E so hashtag bad mood busted. What's something that happened this week or something that you can pre-plan, you know, for next time there was just a little movement that busted that bad mood. Whatever it is, let us know. We would all love some ideas. Um, we had several people on our Tuesday night. Thank you, Lynn, for posting the homework. We had several people in our um, Tuesday night in-person workshop um, here in Powell that um, came up with some great ideas and some things that I thought, gosh, I hadn't even considered that. But yeah, you know, when that happens, it does bust, it does bust my bad mood. So again, hashtag bad mood busted. Oh yeah, and Carol Lou says anytime with her peanut, because she also has a peanut, um, but she says anytime with her peanut busts her bad mood. And it doesn't it though? It absolutely does. And I don't know, grandkids are just so different than, than kids. I don't know, maybe it's because we're not nervous or there's no unrealistic expectations or something. But yeah, those little, those little tykes, they just, they're such fantastic bad mood busters. Okay, so don't forget to tag me. Do your homework. You can do it on Instagram. Um, you just tag at if you have an egg. You can do your homework um, here on the Facebook page. You can do it during our chat, during the second half of our chat, during another chat. You can do it um, over on our Facebook group, connect, wherever you want it, YouTube, on if you have an egg.com, wherever you want to do it, homework, homework, homework. I had such a good week this week. Believe it or not, that little bit of movement getting to read um, your all's homework busted part of my bad mood, okay? So it took a blah and turned it into a yeah because you all were so many of you all did your homework. So again, hashtag bad mood busted. Do it, do it, do it. And Sarah is exactly right. It is time for it's about time for my water. Um, we are going to be talking in the second half some more about soft foods, um, but everybody stop right now. Yes, Sandra, everybody stop right now and get some water. And in case you didn't know, this is sign language. This is a W for water, like you're drinking water. So everybody grab your water. This is the only time during the week that I know that y'all got some water. If you're brand new, this is a one hour long chat. So this is your opportunity to drink some water, run to the potty and come right back because um, we have some cool things to talk about in the second half. Um, we are, we've just about done the cucumbers to death and I'm scared to chew them right now before this puppy comes out. So I'm drinking them now. Everybody get your water. And cucumber water is so delicious and it is so good for you. Okay. So we're going to be spending the second half of tonight's chat finishing talking about getting ready for my tooth pulling tomorrow, but we have, um, we had several people who ended up needing uh, last week's chat. So come to find out, I wasn't the only person in our Tuesday workshop who was getting a tooth pulled this week or this in within a week. Um, Alex had her, she had one of her teeth pulled and bless her heart, she had, um, she had had uh, something, I guess she had a filling in it, had a filling in this tooth that didn't work. She ended up with a root canal that didn't work. She had like at least one failed root canal. I don't remember if it was one or two. And so they finally pulled it and I think she's on day four. And she, the night before she had her tooth pulled, she popped into our t Tuesday night meeting. So, the, or, so during our Tuesday night 
in-person meeting last week. She popped in, weighed in, chatted with Gwen. Then she stopped by and she said, I need that soft foods list because Casey had not posted last week's chat yet and she needed it because she was having one of her teeth pulled the next day. And, the, and both of us are in the same situation. It's a molar. So it's a chewing tooth, you know, so we both kind of needed this soft foods list. Um, we've got uh, somebody with MS who needed the list. We had somebody who's getting ready to have their, um, I don't remember what the procedure is called. Um, and if you're here, you can let me know, but it's uh, where they stretch your stretch your throat. My mother had it done a couple of times. Don't remember what it was called. Um, but she, I know when she was having that issue, um, she definitely needed some softer foods to eat, some easier to easier to chew um, things or things that were pre-chewed, you know, to get down. Um, a couple of people that were having surgery. Um, yeah, just some things. Oh, a car wreck. Uh, anyway, so several people who needed this softer food list. So hopefully those of you who needed it were able to use it. Um, Alex is doing well. Um, she uh, she did message me at the 72 hour mark and told me the best piece of advice she gave me, I think, is make sure that I have an ice pack. Had not even thought of that. So thank you, Alex. I do have a little ice pack at home. Um, of course, I've got some frozen vegetables that I can use, you know, if I need to. Okay, so tomorrow's the big day. Um, I am having this molar pulled, so I've continued to prep the rest of the week. Um, last week, uh, we did soft foods last week. We talked about some soft foods last week. Um, we're going to talk more about soft foods this week. This doesn't have to be just for soft foods, okay? So this could be just some, all of these have been kind of comforting too, if that makes any sense. So you know, might just, have, but might just be a good thing to keep in your, you know, in your repertoire. Um, it's been some, um, oh yeah, okay, so Debbie said frozen peas work great, um, that they, because the package will conform to my face. Perfect, I've got a bag of frozen peas and carrots, that'll be perfect, I will definitely do that, Debbie. Um, but we talked about it a lot last week, um, and I did, con I did eat softer foods last week just because I was afraid to agitate or aggravate this. Um, I 100% know exactly when this happened for the second, second or third, maybe third time, because I've been avoiding dealing with this tooth for a couple of years now. Um, but it was, I normally chew harder things on this side of my face, and I've been into an almond on this side, and boom, I knew immediately when it happened. So I've been eating all soft stuff this last week, trying to let that antibiotic work, trying not to re-aggravate it. And the countdown is on. I am, let's see, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2. Six, seven, eight, nine, 11 hours, 11 and a half hours, I think, from from go time. And yes, Loretta. So I'm 11 and a half hours from go time um, to having this done. And so definitely eating soft food all week helped, helped, helped. I'm confident that it did. Um, and Vicki, yeah, that's, I know. It's done now. It's done. So we're just going to, it's just going to have to go. Okay, so last week we spent some time talking about, um, Oh, hold on a second. Carolou says they might give me an ice pack. She got the one that wrapped around her head and Velcroed at the top of her head. Hmm. Good to know. Okay. I don't think I'm stopping to get one now, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But that's a that is also a great idea. Maybe I can rig something up with the frozen peas and tie. I don't know. I have a hair headband. I could put a headband around my head and put that on there. Yeah. And Debbie just reminded me it's called an esophage esophageal dilation. Yes, so we had a couple people having that done, um, and my mom also had that done, and soft foods were definitely, you know, on that high on that list. Okay, so last week, um, I went through a whole list of foods that I was either going to be prepping or had purchased or whatever, and I just wanted to remind you all by showing you over here is my little cubby. So I can close those doors so people in the showroom can't see them, can't see it, but that is my little cubby of easy things. So the things that we went over last week that are going to be easy, low prep, but don't have to be frozen. They're not perishable. Um, they're, you know, long shelf life. So if I don't end up eating them right now, I mean, I've planned, I've got enough food planned that if I have to eat soft things for like eight days, I'm good to go. Okay. I'm not thinking that it's going to have to be this soft for that long, but you know, better, better to be prepared. So this that's all the things that we talked about last week. Um, oh gosh, Sarah says she tried the pudding recipe and it did not work with the Premier Protein. 
Well, that stinks. It worked fantastically with the um, with the Fair Life protein shake. Okay, I'll tell you about that again here in just a second. But these are all the easy things. Um, and so I do have, dude, that was too fast. Okay, I know y'all heard that. So I do have some more Fair Life protein shakes over here. I've got my mashed potatoes. I've got my SpaghettiOs. I've got um, uh, microwavable uh, mac and cheese. I've just got, you know, I've got some very, very soft things in there. And Sarah, yeah, I feel like maybe something did go wrong. Um, okay, so things, though, that I've already prepped ahead. So I've got all of that. So I have all of that ready to go, just in case I need it. Um, I do have yogurt in the refrigerator. I've got already flavored yogurt in the refrigerator. Um, I've got a cup, some already pre-made apple sauces and things like that. So some, you know, some softer things, but it's all, yeah, Debbie, did it not? That guy was going way, Debbie said, sound like you were at Daytona Speedway. Yeah, that guy was going way too fast for us, for all of us to be able to hear it. Anyway, um, okay. So all of that easy stuff is already there. It's at the ready. I have no excuses for not, for not having something ready to eat. Okay. The other things that I've already prepared, I've already prepped them, prepared. They are ready to go. Um, my secret recipe scrambled eggs. Those are already done. Um, those are super easy to make, super fluffy. I love them. I, I love, love, love them. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, let's see. Trish says, be cautious sipping on hot super coffee because I don't want to get a dry so socket. Yeah, I'm not doing anything. Um, I'm not doing anything super hot. And Sarah says, where is Dusty? He's asleep. Do not wake him up, Sarah. Okay. Um, yes. And I have been super careful, Trish, this whole week leading up to this to not eat anything that's really, really hot or really, really cold. I've been kind of, remember that, you know, the Goldilocks and the Three Bears thing I was talking about last week. I've been working on, it's just right. So I'm going to continue that this week. So again, things that I've already got prepped, ready to go. First one was secret recipe, scrambled eggs. Um, I don't know why I didn't think of scrambled eggs that first week. I love them. They're high in protein, zero points, so yummy. So I went ahead and prepped those, and I've got them in individual containers um, in the freezer, ready to go. And you know what? I love scrambled eggs so much. If I don't eat them all, it's okay. It is okay because I will have... Ooh. Yep, Trish is in the kitchen prepping her stuff for Tuesday, and she's got cottage cheese. Mm -mm. Yeah, sorry. Cottage cheese is not going to happen for me. <laughs> but good luck, Trish. Um, and remind us all, again, what you're having done. So Trish is one of my... Trish is one of my... Uh, like, we don't need to be twins, but we're, you know... We're accidentally being twins buddies. Um, but the secret recipe scrambled eggs, super easy, super fluffy. They are so fluffy, it's ridiculous. Um, those are already on the If You Have an Egg um, uh, blog. So that's www.ifyouhaveanegg.com. And if you go to that search bar, and if you search, if you just put in secret recipe, you'll get a couple of secret recipe things. Um, but the scrambled eggs, highly, highly recommend, even if you don't need to be on a soft food diet. Second thing I have prepped and ready is baked tofu but I did not season it. I didn't put any extra seasoning on it this time. That recipe is also already on if you have an egg.com. Um, I, didn't, I didn't put any particular seasoning on it though, just in case I needed to throw it in with whatever um, to make it happen. And um, so baked tofu, no extra seasoning, just it's just kind of plain tofu because tofu is one of those things that it will take on the flavor of whatever else you're putting it with. So I did not pre-season it so that I can, you know, pair it with several different things. Um, I did go ahead and make some of the double chocolate protein pudding. And Sarah, again, on the, because um, Sarah's turned out kind of watery, on that, it was, I used, I did not use Premier Protein. I used the Fairlife um protein shake and this is different than the than the fair life um is it called core power i've been buying that and using that yes jonna says the baked tofu is the best yeah 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 um and sarah it's okay but i use the fair life protein shake um i have not tried it with premier protein but it was one bottle of this which i think ended up being one and a half cups and then it was two tablespoons of two tablespoons of sugar-free Jello instant pudding. So Sarah, my first question is, did you get, did you get the one that just says Jello, sugar, fat-free, whatever, did you get that kind? Or did you get the kind that says cook, quick cook? 
So, and yeah, you can always go back and add some more pudding. So Debbie said, maybe not enough pudding, and that's that's a true fact, but so you got this kind. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that you didn't accidentally get the kind that you have to cook, because if you have to cook it, it will not, it will not work in this recipe, okay? So this kind, and then two, you know, generous tablespoons of the pudding mix, um, but if it doesn't turn out right, just add a little bit more. I don't know if you remember or not, but when I made it with the oat milk, like my mom makes it, I had to add, I had to add um, um, extra an extra spoonful of this because in the oat milk, it, w it really won't set up. It just, it doesn't like to set up anyway, but it won't set up unless you have extra jello in there. But again, Sarah and everybody else, just make sure that you have this kind, the instant kind, and not the kind that you have to cook. But that is one thing that I've got, I have a couple of those ready. Um, so I figure, you know, hey, if I'm in pain or uncomfortable or, you know, whatever, chocolate pudding always makes everybody feel good. And because it has, because it has a protein shake in it, I made, um, I made, or made, have been making one of these into two servings. And so that means that I, that my pudding is 15 grams of, um, protein. So that's another thing. You got to keep up your strength. You got to keep, keep it up, keep it up. So everything I'm going to tell you, not everything, a lot of the things I'm going to tell you have um, extra protein or have a lot of protein in them um, just to make sure that I'm not just sitting around eating, you know, popsicles and I don't know, whatever. Okay, so secret recipe scrambled eggs, high in protein, baked tofu, high in protein, double chocolate protein pudding, you guessed it, high in protein. Also last week we made mashed sweet potatoes, if you all remember that, the mashed sweet potatoes were in the um, freezer. I put them in the one cup super cubes and put those in the freezer. Those are ready to go. Um, but I'm gonna show you, and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with those here in just a second. Baked apples, I did go ahead and make some of the apple crisp. And let's see, Marion, the pudding, it ended up being two. It ended up, this whole container is three points, but with the addition of the, um, with the addition of the pudding and then dividing it into two, it made it two points per serving for this kind. Um, and I guess I do need to eventually post that as a res as a recipe so that y'all will have it. Um, but the mashed sweet potatoes in the freezer in one cup um, super cube increments. Um, the I made the baked apple crisp like we made a couple of weeks ago. That was soft enough in the instant pot. I don't know if y'all remember this or not. But when we when we made the apple crisp in the air fryer versus the instant pot. I was talking, I said the, the apples were, I was like, gosh, they're kind of mushy. You know, why would you, you know, whatever. This, this is why. So the baked apples that I cored, sliced up, and made in the Instant Pot, I did not put the crisp on top of it because remember, it needs to be really soft. That was perfect in the Instant Pot. So if you go back a couple of weeks and look and listen to or look up the baked apple crisp, um, that in the Instant Pot was perfect. It's the perfect consistency. Okay. So those are already made in the freezer. The polenta that I made a couple of weeks ago in the Instant Pot, already in the freezer, ready to go. And today I made cream cheese sausage balls, you know, cause I thought, you know, um, and oh yeah, Sarah says the ready-made Jello pudding sugar-free cups are good. They're only two points, but they don't have as much protein. That's exactly right, Sarah. And I do normally keep those, but because I'm not gonna be getting protein in a lot of other ways, you know, while I'm just eating this soft food, um, I'm gonna be make I'm gonna make those just to make sure I have enough protein. But I went ahead today and made um, a batch of cream cheese sausage sausage balls. These will not be until after you know I can chew a little bit again. But I was thinking, you know, I can't just eat. I just I don't want to get bored while I'm doing this because then I know me. I know me. I'm gonna start hunting for other things, and then other things are gonna turn into, that's exactly right, Sarah, and then other things are gonna turn into ice cream, you know? So, um, so I just tried to make a few things while I was prepping ahead, let me make sure I'm not, okay, yeah, I'm not talking too much. Um, try to make a few things ahead that would be comfort food, that would be lower in points, that would still have a lot of protein, um, that I can freeze and keep ahead, and again, if I don't eat them now, not a problem. I will eat them later. Um, as a matter of fact, I've already got three sausage balls planned for eating tomorrow um, before I go have my surgery, just because I love them so much. But um, but these are in these cool, reusable, BPA-free, 
no weird stuff, whatever um, freezer bags, and these are gallon freezer bags. And let's see, wait a minute. Debbie says you can also you can also make it with Fair Life, with regular Fair Life milk, pudding mix, and protein powder. What kind of protein powder do you use when you do that, Debbie? Just out of curiosity, what kind of protein drink? Or, uh, yeah, what kind of protein powder? But these are a couple of you all asked me about these. These are Larine. I think it's French. It's L apostrophe E R I N E. So Larine, Larine, and they are um, airtight, leak-proof, eco-friendly, double-sealed, keep food fresh, food-grade material, and they're a home organization assistant. Um, quality assurance. They're BPA-free, recyclable. Um, looks like they're good for the earth. Uh, eco non-governmental organization oh wait a an eco non-governmental organization benefits from your purchase so you know of course I was on board but I got a pack of these I will um, I'll try to I'll post that link on um, you know here in the group from Amazon so that you can find those but I have loved these all of the thing all of the things that I prepped ahead that I put into the super cubes those are all out of the super cubes now and they are in their one cup or two cup. I uh, don't think I made anything in a half a cup. So they're all in their one cup or two cup little blocks out of the super cubes in a bag like this in the freezer now. So again, prepped. Those things are prepped, ready to go. They are ready to go. Um, and they're all things that if I don't eat them, if I don't eat them while, you know, while I'm doing this soft diet, perfectly fine, good food, delicious food that I can eat at another time. Okay, so that I don't run out of time, let me show you a couple of things that I have in process. So I'm gonna say the I'm gonna say comfort food again. I'm having a tooth pull tomorrow. In case you didn't hear that 15 times already, I'm having a tooth pull tomorrow. I'm less frightened about having the tooth pulled than I am for the moments and day afterward because I just really don't know what to expect. It has been Let's see, I was in high school the last time that I had a tooth pulled and it was right before I had my, before I got my braces or maybe it was when I had my wisdom teeth pulled. Anyway, it's been more than 40 years since I've had teeth pulled. I really do not know what to expect and I know the anticipation is probably worse than what's gonna happen. Um, but comfort, protein, comfort, protein, comfort. If you haven't heard me say protein and comfort 15 times already, then you've just not been listening. So. Everything that I've made has some amount or a lot of protein in it, and it also is something that I would consider a comfort food. Scrambled eggs to me, that is a good old Saturday morning comfort food. So I made scrambled eggs. Pudding, comfort food. Um, sausage balls, definitely a comfort food. Two of the other things, though, that I'm prepping, these are the last two things that I'm prepping before I actually go have, before I actually go have it done, these are, I went ahead and made four little, I went ahead and pre-made four little um, um, overnight oat jars, but I want you to know the fruit is not in here and I'm going to freeze these. So I did not realize that you could freeze overnight oats. So I have pre-made these. I will not be eating these in the first day or two because one caution that I was given was not to eat um the rice that I have sitting in there or oatmeal, oats, or something small like that that could get stuck in there the first couple of days. So these will be going in the freezer, but I wanted to have them ready because I'm, I don't know, just anticipate that I'm not going to feel like maving, making them. Um, so, um, so I went ahead and prepped these. I'm going to put them in the freezer. These are literally just um, non-fat plain Greek yogurt, um, oat milk, banana cream, more jello pudding. I'm telling y'all that I have, and listen, if you haven't been following me for a while and you don't know, I have an entire drawer. It, it's a little short drawer and they're laying flat, but I have an entire drawer of assorted jello flavorings. They really should sponsor me or something. You know, y'all should, y'all should all contact jello and tell them that they should sponsor me because I use so much jello. Um, but this is jello banana cream. So it's sugar free, fat free, banana jello, jello pudding mix. And so this is oats, and you can go to ifyouhaveanegg.com and find one of my overnight oats recipes and just copy it, but switch out banana cream. Um, it's got a little bit of chia seeds in it, 
It has oat milk in it, um, non-fat plain Greek yogurt. I've got all that mixed together and ready to go. And these are gonna go in the freezer so that when I'm ready, I can just take one out, let it thaw out a little bit. You can heat it up in the microwave after you take the metal lid off and carefully heat it in the microwave. And then I can slice a banana on top and I can have a very protein filled because remember it's got non-fat plain Greek yogurt in it, which is super high in protein. So high protein, comfort food, it's going to be like, it's going to, it's not just like banana pudding. It's great for banana. Yeah. See, and Debbie says stay away from chia seeds. So that's why I'm thinking this is probably like a day three or four, you know, food to eat, but I want to have it ready. Okay. So that's one of the last things that I'm prepping. So those are prepped. They're going into the freezer tonight and they've been sitting in the refrigerator, letting them, you know, expand so that they can be like overnight oats. They get, you know, get bigger. They expand. Um, but I will be putting those in the freezer and not bringing them out, you know, until we're a few days into this. Also, tomorrow morning, I'll be using the silken tofu that I showed you all last week. Um, silken tofu, the um, some blueberries, and some pistachio pudding. And I'm going to be making um, smoothies. So this is, again, another high protein. Let's just look since I have it out here in front of me. So each serving has um, four grams of protein. You can have the blueberries actually have protein in them, but it's going to be blueberry, silken tofu, blueberries, pistachio. Pistachio and blueberries taste good, believe it or not. I'm um, going to get all that and a little bit of honey um, and a little bit of, of vanilla flavoring. And that's going to be made. That's the last thing I'm making tomorrow morning before I go in, before I go in into the pliers or whatever they're going to be using um going to make those put those also in the freezer for you know for that next couple of days and have those ready to drink um, ready to drink because no drinking through a straw so i'm trying to make some thicker things too that i can eat with a spoon when i'm ready okay we only have like seven minutes left so let me tell you a couple of other things that if you're if you need to be able to do this if again if you're having dental surgery if you're having any other kind of surgery that involves your mouth your um, throat, anything where you've got to eat some soft foods, if you've had a stroke or if you know somebody that's had a stroke, um, if you've had uh, the esophageal, and I've already forgotten what it's called, Debbie, but the esophageal thing, if you're getting ready to have that, any issues where you need to be able to eat soft food for a few days, a few weeks, or for the rest of your life, I hope that does not happen to you. Um, but a few things that you um, that would be helpful if you had to be able to prep all this stuff, a food processor would be handy. Um, if you don't have a food processor, if you happen to have an immersion blender, if you had one and you didn't realize you had it because like my mom talked to me, she talked me into this, I don't know, 20 something years ago. And I'm not gonna lie, it sat in my cabinet for probably 15 of those 20 years, okay? But the immersion blender that has been uber helpful, that is what I made all the pudding with. That's what I'm making the smoothies with, super helpful. So a food processor or a, an immersion blender or, um, or a regular blender, you know, that would be super helpful. The Instant Pot has been in, in, invaluable. Finally found something it was good for. It has been invaluable in making some, you know, some of these things that I needed to prep and get ready. Um, or if you had like a slow cooker, um, but I'm telling you, those sweet potatoes made in the Instant Pot, perfection. I will never, never, ever, never, ever boil potatoes on the stove again for any kind of mashed potatoes. Instant Pot, you won, you won me on that one. Okay, good night, Kim. Um, a microwave. Some of the things, some of the easy things that I bought, I'm going to need a microwave for those. The freezer bags, these, having, the, having this stuff already um, done like in the in the in the super cubes in the individual servings or like the tofu is in a bag like this and it's just loose because I can kind of break it apart before I heat it up sausage balls obviously can do the same thing but some of those other things like the um, the mashed sweet potatoes the apples or applesauce it's more like an applesauce consistency being in those individual little blocks and then putting them in something like this um, has saved so much room in our freezer because it says here at work um, but that's been a lifesaver this little um, crock pot, this little tiny crock pot. I did not know that I was going to be using it for this event, but I have a little teeny tiny, look at this thing. Look how cute it is. This little teeny tiny crock pot that if I'm, if I'm ready to make the sweet potatoes, if I want to heat them up, 
Um, I can just come in that morning. I can put them in a little tiny crock pot and they will be ready to eat when I am ready to eat. Yeah. So we'll talk more about the little tiny crock pot next week um, after I've played with it some more. But yeah, that little crock pot is a great thing. Also, please, please, please do not forget. This is also an opportunity to, to hashtag bulk it up. Um, I don't know if you noticed or not, but there's not a lot of vegetables in, <laughs> in these things that I'm making. Okay. So some opportunities to hashtag bulk it up. Um, one thing that I'm definitely going to do in these potatoes, and I already, tr I already tried this and it worked so well. It worked so, sorry about that. I just kicked something over. It worked so well that I did this twice this week. Um, our, and yeah, and Carol Lou has one of these. I'll, I use this twice. I did this twice this week just in preparation and to make sure that it was as soft as I thought it was going to be, that it was as easy to make. But I took the, the, um, instant mashed potatoes that I had, um, that we talked about last week. And these are four or five points for one of these, depending on which flavor it was. But I took this and instead of using water, I used bone broth and I bought bone broth in these little, um, in these little cartons and then I also bought some that's an in individual two little little individual sleeves or whatever so um ooh, and Trish has one too she uses one of those little crock pots too and she uses it to heat up her breakfast every day see those scrambled eggs would be perfect heated up in that um but this and then I use the bone broth instead of water in here so this bone this brand of bone broth that's called bare bones it adds 20 grams excuse me 20 grams of protein if you use one cup this with this as the water, the bone broth as the water, and then after it's all heated up and mix in um, some nutritional yeast and some non-fat plain Greek yogurt, it is, you can put in a little bit of sprinkle of cheese and melt it in there if you wanted to, it is like loaded, it's like a loaded baked potato, but in mashed potato form, so, so, so good, and add it using the bone broth, and between the bone broth and the nutritional yeast, I added between 10 and 15 because I didn't use a whole cup, but I did add between 10 and 15 grams of protein to mashed potatoes, okay, to instant mashed potatoes, and they were stinking delicious, and people were jealous, okay, so that's a good way to bulk, hashtag bulk it up, also, I forgot to get them out, but the, um, the riced veggies that I got last week, I had, I got riced cauliflower, and then I think I got a riced cauliflower broccoli blend, um, I went ahead and prepped some of my fat-free cream cheese, and the fat-free cream cheese is already on the blog. It's www.ifyouhaveanegg.com, um, and I'll show you on there how to make your own fat-free cream cheese out of non-fat plain Greek yogurt. But the riced veggies with the fat-free cream cheese and some Velveeta cheese heated up. Again, just gonna heat them up, put them in the put them in, or put them in the little crock pot, and let them sit and warm up all day, and it will be a cheesy vegetable. Now that's not for day one, okay? Because I don't want those little riced vegetables in my you know little spot. But I'm figuring a couple of days in, and I'm gonna need something different. The riced cauliflower and riced broccoli with the non with the fat-free cream cheese and some Velveeta heated up in my little um, crock pot. It's gonna be perfect. It's gonna be a perfect cheesy broccoli cauliflower mix for lunch one day. But don't forget about hashtag bulking it up. You can add so many things to these things to bulk them up, to add more protein, to add some fiber, to add some other things. Okay, so I've talked your my head off. I've talked your head off. Tomorrow's the big day. Um, so happy that I prepped all this stuff so I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to call anybody and go, I didn't have anything to eat. I can't eat anything. Just bring me ice cream or bring me a milkshake or a Frosty or something. So I'm so excited, so happy that I took the time to, you know, to prep all this and get it ready. Super excited. I'm super excited that it's all things that I can eat after, just in case I don't eat all of them. But I hope you all had a fantastic evening. I hope you enjoyed this and you got some idea for something. Um, and yeah, if you're watching this on YouTube, please let that next video roll over. Um, go ahead and click that little um, subscribe button. I would appreciate it so much. And I will try to check in with you all um, when I get done, just to let you know how everything went. So y'all have a fantastic evening. I'll try to talk to you tomorrow. And hello, Anna. I didn't see you earlier. I will try to talk to you all tomorrow, or not talk, but I'll try to check in with you tomorrow um, and let you know how it's going. But have a good evening, and I'll see you later. Good night.